This is Rob Wagoner again, and today I wanted to talk about setting up Hyper-V in Windows Server 2012. The first thing I want to point out is how we set up our networks. I've talked about this before with Windows Server 2008 R2, and some of the same rules apply with Windows Server 2012. My first suggestion is that you name your NICs. I name my NIC so that I know exactly which NIC goes where because as we connect things like iSCSI or separate production or backup networks, we want to make sure we have the right NIC doing the right job. And so as you can see, I have my host NIC, which is the NIC that connects straight to my host operating system. I have my VM NIC. This is the NIC that's going to handle all of my virtual machine traffic. And then I have my two iSCSI NICs which later on as we connect to our iSCSI shared drives we'll be able to utilize these NICs. Now I've got my four NICs labeled and I move into the new server manager. This is the new server manager dashboard with Windows Server 2012 and it gives us a lot more capabilities. It gives us these quick glanceable views to tell us how many servers we're managing and what's the health of each service or capability this server is delivering. To add the Hyper-V role I'll move over here to manage and then add roles and features and here I'll walk through this wizard. This wizard is very straightforward but it'll ask what type of capability are we adding. We're going to add a role based or feature based install and then choose servers. The thing I love about this new server manager tool is I can add features or roles to various servers throughout my organization not just the one I'm logged into. So let's say I'm running a number of my servers without any user interface, just a straight core install. I could now use the GUI here to still install roles and features on those other servers as well. So I'll choose C1. This is the server I'm going to set up Hyper-V on. And I move over here and choose Hyper-V. It also asks me if I want to add these additional features, like the administrative tools. So I'll go ahead and add these management capabilities as well. And then the other thing I really like is I could add multiple roles or additional features while I'm installing Hyper-V. For this discussion, I'm just going to go with Hyper-V. I'm not going to add any additional features, but as you can see, I could right here. And now I move into the Hyper-V specific configuration. My virtual switches. So remember when I showed you how I named my NICs and I had this VM NIC? By naming it, I now know exactly which NIC I want to use for my virtual machine traffic. Migration. With Server 2012, we can now allow shared nothing live migrations. If we're going to set up a cluster, we'll have failover cluster server and we would configure it there after we set up the cluster. But if I'm just building a standalone server, I may want to right now configure how this server will manage shared nothing live migrations. For now, I'm going to leave this blank and come back and configure it after I've installed Hyper-V. But as you can see, you can configure it right now. I can also configure default locations for things. For now, I'm going to leave this at the default and move in to the configurations. The other thing I really like about this user interface is I have the checkbox, which will restart the destination server automatically. This way, if the install requires a reboot, it'll go ahead and do that. It doesn't need to do part of it and then ask me if it can reboot and then continue the rest. So I'll go ahead and say yes, do the automatic restarts, and then I can choose install, and it'll walk through the install process. Now, while it's doing its part, I'll tell you a little bit of what it's doing. What we're doing at this point is setting up Hyper-V to be installed on this server. Currently, the operating system is installed on the bare metal, and what Hyper-V actually does is takes the operating system that's installed on the bare metal and creates a special virtual machine called Parent, where this host OS now runs in Parent, which is a special virtual machine. It's not a virtual machine you need to worry about or manage, but the host OS is now managed in this virtual machine with Hyper-V running on the bare metal. As you can see, the server's restarting now, and I'll come back to you once the server's restarted. Now that we're back after the server reboots, you can see the feature installation has completed. I'm going to choose close here. The first thing I want to do is show you the network configuration. Because as you'll see, we now have a new NIC, this VEthernet. So this is the virtual adapter that Hyper-V created. We can remove that. 
starting in Server 2008 R2 and Server 2012. So the first thing I want to do is show you how we do that. So as I load Hyper-V Manager, when I go into the Virtual Switch Manager, it shows me this network card that we identified from the beginning. We named it VM Nick, and now it shows up as its real Intel name. Notice this checkbox, Allow Management Operating System to Share This Network Adapter. This is the checkbox that creates this virtual NIC. As you can see, if I move back over to here and uncheck this box, choose Apply, it's telling me I may lose connectivity for a moment. But if I move back over here, you'll now see that this network card has been removed. That was the virtual NIC. I don't need it since I have this dedicated host NIC. If I only had a single NIC in my host, I would need that virtual NIC so I would have a NIC that my virtual machines communicated to as well as a NIC that my host would be able to communicate to and from. So with that, I can now close that and look at some of the other settings around Hyper-V. I'll go ahead and move here. Remember how we were able to set up default directories? I could go in here and change these if I wanted where my virtual machines and virtual hard disks are stored. If I have any remote FX GPUs, able to manage those here. NUMA spanning. If I have some higher end servers, it gives me the ability to tweak how memory is managed. Live migrations. Now, remember when we set up Hyper-V, we could configure live migrations during setup, and I opted to not do that. What I've done here is gone ahead and enabled incoming and outgoing live migrations. And I've also decided here to go ahead and use Kerberos as my authentication method. Now keep in mind this requires constrained delegation, which means the physical server has to have permissions on the other servers to do live migrations because you may not have users logged in. We have some documentation that talks about how to set up constrained delegation. But as you can see, I could define how many live migrations can simultaneously be run against this server. In Server 2012, we don't have limits on how many virtual machines you can live migrate, but of course the capacity of the server will probably create a realistic limit. I've been successful running six or eight virtual machine live migrations on some of my hardware. Storage migrations. So let's say I want the virtual machine to keep running on the physical host, but I want to change the drive the virtual machine's running on. Here I could actually move from, say, the D drive to the E drive or from sh local storage to shared storage, a SAN, while the virtual machine continues to run. Replication configuration. I've already created the Hyper-V replica video, and in that video it talks about how to configure replication, so we're going to step through that as well. Then I have my other user configurations. How do I handle the keyboard, mouse, and reset? I can reset all of the checkboxes that might have hidden some of the dialogues in the wizard right here from this screen. Go ahead and click OK and now we've taken care of setting up and configuring Hyper-V. We already talked about the virtual switch manager so I could create multiple virtual switches here if I chose to and then we've also included the virtual SAN manager. So if you have a fiber channel based SAN traditionally you couldn't expose a LUN from the fiber channel SAN directly to a VM. Now with the virtual SAN manager, you can. We can now have this fiber channel SAN and you could present a LUN directly to a virtual machine. That was all I wanted to cover today and in my further sessions we'll be talking about more details around Hyper-V and virtualization. Thank you for your time and I hope you have a good day.